So this is the yellow light of death, uh, so named despite actually being a red light. This will happen on older PlayStations that have been used for a while. Apparently it's when the uh, solder connection between either the CPU or the graphics card uh, heats up and cools and heats up and cools a bunch of times from normal use and eventually just shatters so you lose the connection between the processor and the motherboard. Um, the solution is to reflow the processor, which is to heat things up until it melts and flows back into where it's supposed to be. Uh, it's a temporary fix, diminishing returns, um, but it might let you squeeze another couple extra months out of your PlayStation and get a uh, backup at least so you don't lose all of your hard work and save games. Uh, there are a couple of good videos up here already that show how to do this and I'll link to them, um, but they're all for kind of the newer model PlayStations and uh, this is the one that I've got. It's kind of the big old behemoth first generation and so the procedure is a little bit different so I'm gonna take you through and show you how to do this properly and reflow it so that you can get all your saved backups and whatnot. All right, let's do it. All right, so the first thing you're going to do is remove this top cover. Uh, this just sort of slides over to the left like that and then lifts up. And over here on the left side, I've got two pieces that are kind of important. There's this screw here that's uh, usually covered up by a little rubber foot, but uh, mine's been off for a while because I pulled it off when I first did this and lost it. Um, and there's also this little cover here that holds uh, the hard drive. So take your fingernail or flathead screwdriver, just pop that side off, and this just lifts up, and there's the hard drive. So you need to take this blue screw out, uh, in order to pull the hard drive out. And I guess people say that this is really easy to strip, so it's important to have the right size screwdriver. Uh, I didn't have a problem I'm just using this normal uh, Phillips head screwdriver. So, that comes out. And just lift this tab up. This slides over to the right, and the hard drive just lifts out. Next, take this screw off here. And like I said, usually there's going to be a little rubber piece on that um, that you can just kind of pull off in the same way and set that to the side, unless you're irresponsible like me and uh, want to just lose it. There are going to be a lot of screws in this, by the way, so it's useful to have a little organizer or something to keep them all separate. That one just comes off, looks like that. Okay. Now, I can take the main cover off here. There are a couple of screws, a whole bunch of them actually, um, you're going to need to take off here. Uh, they're shown by these little arrows. So there's one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, and one there. Uh, this one up here, you can see, has a little S with an arrow. Um, that one's shorter than the others. I've already taken a couple of these off. Um, most of them look like that. They're pretty long. Um, this one, let's see in a second here. It's a little bit shorter. Okay, so let's get the rest of those off.
Okay, so that's all of these. Now this piece, like the top cover, just sort of pops off, ideally. Yeah, so just lifts up in the back there. Let's see what I'm doing. And it just comes off like that. Let's set that off to the side. You can see the contacts for the power cable there. On some of the newer models, there's actually a little connector here that'll anchor it to the, uh, the actual power connector on the motherboard. So that's part of why it's important to make sure you're following the right directions for your actual PS3, because just lifting it off like I just did there, uh, you might actually break something if you have the wrong kind of uh, system. So now you can see some of the guts here. That's the power supply, Blu-ray driver, um, this is the uh, Wi-Fi cable and the Blu-ray receiver back here. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is pull all of these off. So what you got to do, there are a couple of screws back here that go to the power supply. Um, there's one there, and then this is the ground right here, and another one there. So let's take all of those off. Make sure this washer uh, that goes with the uh, ground stays attached to that screw. That's an important part of the, uh, the grounding. Make sure you don't short something out. Um, it's easy to kind of drop that off. So make sure you lift that off as a unit. Once you've got those off, can uh, disconnect the Blu-ray unit next. So let's first unplug this from the motherboard. Uh, this just lifts straight up, not too much trouble. Pretty sturdy, you can give them a little bit of a wiggle. Okay, so now we're gonna pull this up. There's a uh, ribbon on the underside of this that actually attaches it to the motherboard, so you don't wanna yank too much on it. Just pull it up a little bit. And you'll see that ribbon right there. like. Um, so this has a little release lever on it. Just pop this black strip up like that. And then that just pulls straight out like that. And you can set this off to the side. Okay. Likewise, you disconnect the power supply from the motherboard. Pull that straight up. Now we've got three more screws on the power supply. They're there and there. So let's do those. Okay, and now again, let's make sure we have that ground off all the way. I just leave this ground screw usually connected to the uh, little thing back there itself that never needs to come off. Um, you do need to unplug the actual power cord from the back though. And that has a little tab on it you just push down on. And just like a computer, it just sort of unplugs there. See that washer little unit came off already there. Be careful with that. Okay, 
And now, same thing, this one doesn't have a ribbon on it. Um, there's an actual plug you'll see when we get this up, so this can just come straight up. We have all the screws off. Nope, missed one. There's another screw. Over here on the side. Is it? Oh, no. That's not part of the power supply, so yeah, this should just come straight up. And it does. See, there's the little power cord. Okay, and this can go off to the side too. Now we've got the guts here. So let's take the uh, network cards off next. This is probably one of the most fragile parts of the whole thing, so this is worth taking a little bit of care with. Um, I'm going to take these two screws off, disconnect that ribbon, take that screw off. This long cord connects the Wi-Fi and the blue, uh, Bluetooth receiver for the controllers and whatnot. Um, that needs to stay connected, and it's just a little uh, plug-in right there. You can probably reconnect it if it comes off, um, but on this side it's just a solder bridge, uh, and that's pretty fragile. Um, so this is pretty carefully uh, a careful operation here. Um, so what I'm going to do is disconnect all of that. Um, I need both hands to do that, so I'm going to stop this video and uh, I'll pick it up again once I have all of that disconnected and we're down to the EM shield. Okay, I've got all of those screws off now. You can see this uh, ribbon connector is the same as the one that was on the Bluetooth drive. It's locked in. All you need to do is take your fingernail and flip this little black piece up like that. And this ribbon just pulls straight back and out. Okay, now we're going to lift both of those off as a unit and set them off to the side. Okay, so now this is uh, down to the EM shield. Anybody, if you've ever worked on a laptop or taken a, apart anything like that, you'll know what this is for. This is uh, to prevent the hard drive and the Blu-ray and all those components up on the top um, from electromagnetically interfering with what's going on on the motherboard. So to get this uh, big thing off, we have to take off another whole bunch of screws. Um, again, some of these are off already. Um, there's one there, and usually there's one there also, and there, and there, and there. And there. So let's get those off. You can just look as you're doing this, make sure you've got all the screws, anything that, you know, looks like it needs to come off in order to get this piece off. If it's holding something down, uh, then it should probably come off. Basically, all of these screws are going to have to come out at some point anyway, so it's not a disaster if you unscrew the wrong ones in the wrong order. Um, just make sure you keep, keep them separate. Um, first couple of times I did this, I wrote a little uh, list to myself. Um, and kept them in separate little bins so I knew which one was which. I've done this, uh, it's my third time now, so I know more or less what I'm doing. Um, again, you can see, I don't know if this video is good enough to show it, there are little arrows here that show you which ones actually belong to part of the EM shield. So when in doubt, you can kind of follow that as directions. Okay, so those are all off now. Uh, next thing we have to do is take these big uh, load-bearing pieces off and kind of hold the whole thing together. Um, these have numbers 
one 